Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex. Today, Kevin Zeitler was released. The New York Giants cut their best offensive lineman and right guard. Um, this is a problem, guys, and I think it needs to be addressed because we don't have any solutions right now. If the Giants are hoping that they're going to land an offensive lineman in the draft, it's never a good idea to cut players with the idea that a guy's going to fall to you and you're going to walk into the sunset with a prospect you had in mind uh, two months before the draft. I think this was a massive mistake, personally. Kevin Zeitler was our best offensive lineman. Um, our offensive line ranked 32nd in pass blocking efficiency last year. We had rotations at right tackle, rotations at left guard, a center, um, pretty much a rookie center in Nick Gates, as Gettleman even said um, in his postseason press conference you know, a couple weeks ago, not really a couple days ago. Um, this is a big problem for the Giants, right? This is an issue that if right guard becomes this massive liability in 2021, my mind, my head is going to explode, explode. When you have a terrible offensive line and then you go and cut your best lineman, you're only hurting yourself. You're only putting yourself in a bad spot. Now I get the cap savings, okay? I get the fact that you cut him, you saved $12 million. Um, you know, you, you now have that to roll over into Leonard Williams' contract, but the Giants don't have any money right now anyway. Aside from Leonard Williams, they have to restructure deals. They have to make other cuts just so they can sign a free agent wide receiver and really even try to resign Dalvin Tomlinson if that's where they're going to go. But now the Giants have the right guard position to work with that, you know, they have to solve this problem now that I don't know uh, where they're going to look. I mean, of course, this free agency is going to be insane. There's going to be so many players being cut and axed left and right. But the reality is... Right, Zeitler is an above average right guard. And, you know, the Giants don't have that much money invested in their offensive line. After cutting Nate Solder, which I imagine they should do, um, you know, post June 1st, they'll save $10 million. The problem is, I don't think they're going to cut Nate Solder. I, I don't know, you know, at this point, if they're cutting Kevin Zeitler, they haven't even considered him yet. They're saying they're trying to restructure Nate Solder, move him to right tackle. You know, this offensive line is going to be a mess. Um, I'm really worried. Of course, like, if they do really well, if they somehow put, put it together, piece it together, I'll be ecstatic. But I don't see how getting rid of your best offensive lineman, um, putting Nate Solder at right tackle where he hasn't played in over a decade. He just missed this past season um, by opting out. What are, we, what are we doing here? You know, I know Gettleman's supposed to be the offensive line guru figuring out where to get players and finding gems in later rounds. He got Nick Gates. That was a big one. But I'm not sold on Shane Lemieux. He was the worst graded pass blocker in the entire NFL last season. I'm not sold on Matt Parrott, who was rotated in and out frequently, and he didn't show that he could be a, a above average, even average pass blocker. Maybe he's a good run blocker, but I didn't see the pass blocking efficiency that I needed to see to, to be convinced that he's a starter um, in week one in year two. I don't think so. Um, so Shane Lemieux and, and Matt Parrott, and, and you know Dave Gellman said at some point you do have to play the kids. Okay, I get that, but don't destroy your quarterback in the process, okay? Don't destroy your offensive line. The Giants' offensive line is has always been a mess. You know, it's been a mess for years. I don't, I can't even recall the last time we've had an offensive line that's worth even mentioning as good. And now we're sitting here cutting our best players again, and we're hitting the restart button. Um, we're trying to figure out how to solve a right guard position. You know, there are a couple guys that did hit uh, free agents. You know, Trey Turner, um, Gabe Jackson. Um, you know, Joe Thune, that's another one. There, there's guys, and maybe they go and try to find a stopgap, um, right guard, and, you know, in that case, they can maybe go $6 million for a right guard for a stopgap starter and, and draft the guy to compete. You know, maybe that's something that they're going to do. They end up saving a good chunk of change from Kevin Zeller, but I don't know why they shouldn't extend him, rip up his contract, offer him a new deal. Um, you know, of course, behind the scenes, something else might be going on. Maybe Kevin Zeller didn't want to restructure. Maybe he wanted to just leave. He didn't want to resign an extended deal. Um, he wanted to go to a different place. Who knows? But the reality is we have a massive problem at right guard. A couple names that come to mind in the draft, um, Landon Dickerson, um, Wyatt Davis. Those two guys, you know, could be starting right guards at the next level. I think Wyatt Davis is an immediate starting right guard. So if they're targeting him, okay. But again, you can't guarantee a, a player's going to fall to you. And if he's not there, you're in trouble. You know, you're in big trouble because now you're trying to solve things about uh, patchworking and, and getting veterans who might not, you know, be adequate, like Cam Fleming, for example. This is a problem, guys. The offensive line, once again, a mess. No idea what they're doing there. Uh, Dave Gettleman did not make me feel confident in his plan moving forward. Um, you know, in his press conference, I wasn't really sure. Uh, what he was trying to say, what they're going to be doing, and hopefully they have some really good moves in mind. Hopefully they're expecting some really good free agents to be on the board. 
Um, you know, Richie Incognito is another one. I know he has issues. I probably wouldn't um, dabble in that in that pond. But the very the very least, they're gonna have to sign somebody um, for a cheap contract that's gonna you know save them some money after the Kevin Zeidler release. So we'll see what happens, guys. Let me know who your preferred right guard would be in the comment section on YouTube. I really would like to hear who you think will supplement that loss because it's massive. I sure as hell don't feel comfortable with Will, will Hernandez and Shane Lemieux as our starting guards. Um, you know, considering they were rotating, they were both awful last year. Not that confident in that. Um, that that duo right there. So we'll see what happens, guys. But we'll keep you updated on all the news. This is just a quick little blurb, little update for you guys to you know review this this cutting and what it means for the Giants. So we will catch you guys in the next video. We have an awesome interview coming up with cornerback prospect Tay Gowan. Um, really today, it'll be out tomorrow. So hope you guys uh, check that out and see he's he's climbing draft boards from UCF. Um, really intriguing prospect. So I'm really excited to see what he's got uh, to say and really what he offers um, the NFL. And maybe the Giants can look at him in the mid-round. So we'll see what's going on there. But as always, guys, thank you so much. We'll catch you guys on the next video.